It's a distraction and it's a disappointing policy in a sense. And I speak to someone who, as you imply, was a head teacher for 15 years. It was a maintained, comprehensive school. And we were so proud of all of those young people from all kinds of backgrounds who got to top universities, just like the ones who sat next to them who perhaps didn't go to top universities, but reflected a society as it is rather than one where you select at the age of 11. And it can feel like your trajectory for the rest of your life is decided by that test. And we, we really don't need any more of that now. At what age should we select? Well, I don't, I don't think if you look at the most successful uh, education systems, selection is part of it. It's about great teachers helping children to learn things so they can do well with their exams. And actually, the, the very best systems show that you can have the brightest child in that school and a child who is better at other things and academically not so good. And instead of dividing children up in a society that needs more coherence to it, why don't we focus on great teaching well, instead of what feels like an ideological... But I'm, I'm not entirely sure why, why we can't focus on great teaching at exactly the same time. But I'm intrigued. When I ask you what age should we select, everyone's fixated at this whole thing. At 11, this awful thing happens to children who don't get in. Of course, the great things happen to the children who do get in. Um, but, but we do divide children up because we, we stream them uh, in their classes. Everyone knows who the bright kids are. Everyone knows who the thickies are and who the average kids are. Everyone knows who's good at football, good at music. good at um, If we're not going to have selection academically why do we have selection in for instance like sports teams why do we have the first 11 why do we why do we uh, have uh, elitism in say music you know why can't I who can't play an instrument at all why can't I be in the school orchestra why are you being elitist why are you selecting only the best in that field why do we alone in the area of academic ability and I completely accept there are plenty of other ways of being clever but why in that one area do we think that it's terrible to select children and be elitist well, let, uh, let, let me respond to that because I think it's a bit of a caricature of what a lot of us think. So it, let's say that I'm running a, a grammar school and I, I represent uh, the, many of the leaders of our 230 or so grammar schools in this country. If, if what I'm going to do is to expand my existing grammar school and I'm going to set up an annex 10 miles away, as has happened in Kent, then by definition, if I'm going to take in 450 more children, those children are going to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So those children will be selected and will be taken out of the existing schools there. Now, that might be great news for those children who are selected. Parents probably won't think it's great news if their child just misses that selection. And the net effect is that the school which the parent was already sending their child to, A, struggles financially, and B, starts to be tarred with the association of being second rate. And I think that most parents just want a good local school, which then, as you say, streams and sets and all the other things that give academic excellence, but you don't have to be divided and sent well, to another school well, 10 miles away this, to do that. This is the, the reason why a lot of uh, people uh, or teachers at state schools, at comprehensive schools, don't want the bright kids being taken off and creamed off the top and going to grammar schools is it will rather expose the standards in many of our state schools. The the, the international compact league tables show that although there has been improvements in recent years, and I'm a big fan of what Michael Gove did uh, with education. I know a lot of teachers aren't. That's kind of a reason why I'm a fan of it. Um, but but the, 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 we have actually seen us falling down those league tables. Germany, for instance, has a fantastic education system. They did they actually did the grammar school system properly for decades. They had the technical side and they've had fantastic manual manufacturing base as a result of this strong emphasis on technical ability that they had the tripartite system which we never really did but they then went to this idea that well no it's, it's wrong you shouldn't separate children let's move to comprehensive system within about a decade they changed back to the grammar system because they could see the effect the, the problem I have and I, and I say this as someone who has grammar school educated working class parents who went to grammar school and the university as a result I went to a comprehensive I'm sending my daughter private because I went to a comprehensive and there wasn't a grammar school option near me but the but the main reason is I know that I in no way did me being a bright kid at my comp improve other people's ability. All it did was bring down my ability because I was taught in classes that taught to grade C, not grade A. Most schools don't have enough straight grade A pupils to, to, to have in a particular class or stream on their own. And actually, in most state schools, the kids who are really bright, the kids who are academic, they, they're more likely to have to dumb themselves down to fit in than be admired and be bringing the rest of the group up. I, I just think this is... If, if the comprehensive system delivered what we keep being told by people like you, it should, it, it should deliver, it would have done it by now. You've had, you've had the best part of 50 years. Wouldn't it have worked by now? Well, I think what we are seeing is, first of all, if you look at the judgment of schools as they are now from the Independent Inspector at Ofsted, they say that 89% of schools are good or outstanding. It's always a danger of judging 
through your own experience, it sounds to me like... No, I can, I can judge from lots of different things. Can I just say, an Ofsted ruling of good, if you look, I mean, some of the schools in my area are judged good. I wouldn't send my daughter's old guinea pigs to, to those schools. They, the, 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 some of the things on which Scots schools are rated good are frankly laughable. OK, but all, all I'm saying is we need to be careful make, make, about making broad brush, uh, stereotypical judgments about the, the, the state of schools based on your own experience. No, My I wasn't. experience as a head, as a head teacher uh, in a school which brought in academically bright children where parents were choosing that school instead of the independent mm-hmm. sector, and we saw those children thrive. And I take exception to the idea that, that somehow those bright children were being disadvantaged because they were mixing with the hoi polloi. It was quite... No, and again, you, and again, in no way, in no way am I, I talking about it. Nothing to do with hoi polloi. I mean, you've immediately put that sort of class bias on that as opposed to well, right children. Like no, no, you can't, you right? don't expect, you don't expect the Olympic team, the Olympic athletics team to train with me. I can barely, false, I can barely walk, totally let alone run. Analogy. It's a totally false analogy. It's not. Why what is it what? a false analogy? Why? Why do you think that uniquely in this one field that the people who are gifted in a particular field should be taught alongside people who are average? But it, but it isn't about children who are gifted in a particular field. It, it is about what parents will want, which is their child to have a well-balanced, broad experience of education. And why why does a grammar school or a, sta- or a comp stop that? Well, you're you're well, saying these school... things as if they're either or. They're not either or. Well, what a, what a grammar school will, will do, according to research, and this isn't me making this up, is it appears to not have the effect on social mobility that this government keeps What's telling us. What's that got to do with anything? Doing. Well, because if you've got a government that says we're going to put £50 million because this is going to give children from disadvantaged backgrounds advantages, the evidence suggests that won't. And at a time when too many schools have got too little money, it feels like £50 million that could be gone into making the whole of the system better mm. goes to an ideological I'll, distraction. Now on, now, on that, I do agree with you. I think we've got, we have a shortage. Uh, we have a fall in, in spending per child uh, in, in, in school, and, and, and we need to tackle that. And I think that, personally, I agree with you. I think that's a higher priority than this. Mm. But this is the thing. I don't think that education, uniquely as of public services, should be about social mobility and should be about uh, uh, any particular ideological course it should be simply about providing the providing a service to to the to the kind of service that is tailored to the child's needs and the reality is that that children in composite you just you only have to look at the oxbridge statistics it's private schools and grammar schools who are getting in all the top schools in i think that of the top 100 schools in the country that are state schools i think like 99 of them are, are grammar schools and the other but one Julie, is why, selected why, why by the back door why, why would you surprise that be surprised that a school that selects children using an, an entry test age 11 then sees no, their children do better no, I'm not, no I'm not surprised but no but but the point is in many areas where there is no selection at all no access to grammar schools as you know these are very geographically uh, uh, um, focused in particular areas that, that those schools if, if comprehensive schools could deliver this amazing education there would be a selection of bright kids from states lots of those state schools going to the top universities and doing well and they're not because they they are being brought down. The reality is that, that we can't actually. Now, maybe the Chinese can do it. Maybe Singapore can do it. There is a different attitude towards education in a lot of those cultures that which we often compare ourselves to. The reality is our, our comprehensive system has failed millions of children. And in particular, it is failing children at the very top, at the brightest academic children, who are the ones who could be going on to generate wealth, to cure cancer, to take us to Mars. It is, it is economically insane for us not to make sure that every child who is capable of getting straight A's and doing really well and, and, and setting up a business and employing people isn't able to do that. But it's economically insane if we use £50 million, which is likely, based, based on a kind of track record, to give some middle-class parents who can coach their children and make sure they do the... Those horrible middle-class parents. How dare those middle-class parents try and help those children? Horrible people, aren't they? You were quick to dismiss social mobility. Frankly, one of the things I'm proudest of as a head teacher is people who came from pretty tough, disadvantaged backgrounds, going to a school that did everything it could for them, and those children are in top universities, and they didn't have to go to a grammar school for it, and schools like that one should be benefiting from £50 million Um, instead of this... Now, Jeff, on that, I 100% agree with you, and I say this as someone whose husband left school at 16 and whose and who's best friends left school at 16. So I completely understand I'm not coming from a, ha- you know, a hoity-toity world where uh, I, I think that. But however the reality is a lot of the bright kids are going to come from middle class homes where they've been read to from a young age where they've had, you know, they've had a certain sort of lifestyle and expectations on them. That doesn't make those middle class parents bad parents. 
Of course it doesn't, but it does mean that if a government is saying that social mobility is so important that children who haven't been read to should have advantages, then that's where our resources should go. You and I last spoke about the importance of reading and family yeah. responsibility on all of that. Today's announcement is a distraction from that, and the likelihood is it will have no positive effect on social mobility, and it will lead to further underfunding in the schools that deserve to have proper funding. Okay, I genuinely, if you want to spend that 50 million quid really well then to improve social mobility, you're going to have to send in the, the reading police every night uh, to, to make sure that children have a bedtime and children get read to and they've eaten their broccoli. Um, unless we are going to manage people's home lives to that extent, you are always going to see middle class kids on average, don't call in and say, oh, I'm a worker. I know on average, middle class kids are going to do better than working class kids. That's a fact. Jeff, you know that. Oh, oh I see. So I, I apologies. Didn't know a state, a apologies. No, I wanted you to carry. Yeah, that is, that is what it's like. I, I just think that lots of us want to be idealistic, and we, we and we see the benefits of those children where we are able to do things in schools with great teachers, and it's going to be harder for those teachers to work in schools where you are creaming off the kinds of children who actually just add to a sense of how exciting it is to be a teacher. A teacher wants to teach the full range of children. Oh, and a full hold range on a minute. Of being in a We've school. got to something here. It's not about the kids at all. It's about the teachers and who they well, want to teach. Is, because the quality of education is going to be about the quality of the teachers you get. And by definition, if I open a new school, a grammar school, uh, in the middle of a town that's never had selection, then it is likely that some teachers are going to want to work in that grammar school rather than the yeah. other school. And you start to create a sink mentality where parents lose confidence in an existing school and we see a spiralling of Do you know what? That's almost, like, that's almost like saying good teachers are going to want to teach the bright kids who need the least, the least effort to teach. That's like saying no one's ever going to want to uh, you know, be a cancer doctor because they don't want to treat the really poor patients. I mean, I, I don't think that we should let teachers choose their pupils. I think pupils should be choosing their teachers. I'm old-fashioned like that. 